Hello and welcome to the Personalities of the Tarot Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Sear, and this is Season 2, Episode 19, for February 10th, 2024. And I'm on time this week. <laughs> uh, I've been feeling that mental uh, rebalancing phase of Aquarius, February 1st through the 9th. Check out the last episode if you want to know more about that. Now we're beginning a new moon, February 10th. And those who follow the phases of the moon have observed that new moons are the perfect time for fresh starts, new beginnings, and transformation. This February 10th is also the Lunar New Year, celebrated throughout several Asian cultures. In China, it's the year of the dragon, which is very auspicious. So get out your best red fit and celebrate. Remove any bad luck that needs to go and ring in a good and prosperous year. In this episode, I have a very cool list of famous birthdays, so stay tuned for that. And I'll talk about the move into the reign of the King of Cups, who rules February 10th to March 9th, 10th, right in there. He's taking over for the Knight of Swords, which has been admittedly some... It's, it's been a weird period for reallocating thoughts and communication practices, to say the least. I'm also going to talk about late Aquarius, February 10th through the 19th. This period is covered by the Seven of Swords in the Minor Arcana of the Tarot. It's going to be an interesting, and I say that in quotes, interesting period to navigate. So do that thing you do. Sit back and chill, drive your car, or pop in your AirPods and go for a walk while we get into the energy that we're all working with now. Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords is often and not incorrectly attributed to being the card of deception and lies. But it's much more nuanced than that. Personally, I call this card the checks in the mail card. The idea that what they don't know won't hurt them, keeping information close to the chest. However, I do see sevens in the tarot as the next evolution of the suit or the refinement and structure of the suit. And knowing that swords, which all air signs have to grapple with, swords covers intellect, communication, and emotional strife. The refinement or evolution here is to go it alone. Some see this card as the lone wolf with a need to escape the rest of the herd. For those late Aquarians born February 10th through the 19th, you're likely incredibly independent, but actually enjoy being around others more than the early to mid Aquarians. You have a revolutionary spirit, and some might even call you edgy. You tend to test limits, push boundaries, and, and probably, let's be honest, probably test people's patience. Now, if you manifest the shadow side of the Seven of Swords, late Aquarius, you may have an inability to commit to something or someone, vacillating back and forth with all of the options available. Eventually, for the good of all, and this also includes yourself, for your own good, you're going to need to summon the courage to face and act on situations. And this may mean breaking away from negative habits, which trap you in familiar or comfortable circumstances. For those of all signs now, this period may have you or someone near you sneaking off, avoiding obligations, shirking responsibility, lying. And, and don't forget, withholding information is as good as lying. <laughs> don't, don't, don't tell yourself otherwise or don't try to pass it off as something that it's not. Um, but this, this period can also, uh, you might find people being two-faced or there may even be some betrayal of some sort. And you know what? There are times when secrecy is important to the outcome, but you need to remember to use caution when you're trying to gain an advantage. Your cleverness may be helpful in manipulating a situation, but there again, you really have to be mindful of how your actions and words impact others. Now is the time for focused awareness and mental control. And whatever you do, don't avoid the truth. Just 
Just a reminder, I'm a highly rated tarot and psychic reader. I have five stars on Google, Fiverr, Groupon, Fresha, and I think even Yelp. If you're interested in getting a reading, but maybe you didn't know how to go about finding a psychic for you, check out my site at elizabethseer.com. I have posts about my work and personal experiences, and even something about psychic scammers who give us all a bad name. I have video meditations and links to a few products I created to help out if you're also spiritually curious, like me. You can only book a reading with me through my team at chickswithspiritualgifts.com or my personal site, elizabethseer.com. The King of Cups, also known as the King of Hearts, he takes over the reins from the Knight of Swords, February 10th, through March 9th, 10th, right in there. Basically, the last third of Aquarius and the first two-thirds of Pisces. King of Hearts makes sense since he's ruling during the time of Valentine's Day. Now, if you know someone born during these dates, they can be male, female, or non-binary, they're likely emotionally wise, calm, poetic, creative, and inspirational, you know, when they're manifesting or showing their sunny side. They can also be great spiritual healers using their innate understanding of emotional tides. Many of them, believe it or not, are even psychic or highly intuitive in their own right. They're often good listeners, giving them the ability to easily relate to others. And that deep empathy can be both a blessing for others and a curse for themselves if they don't know how to protect their emotions and spirit. This king can dispense wonderful nuggets of wisdom relating to the heart and soul, making him a good therapist or counselor for others, whether in a professional capacity or not. Ah, but as always, as I've discussed, we all have that shadow side which can peek out or come screaming out of us at times. And if the King of Cups personality manifests his shadow side, he's over-emotional and impulsive. He can be emotionally vindictive, setting his natural empathy aside while he attributes and projects his negative feelings upon others. In this way, like all water signs, he can be emotionally merciless, creating and leaving drama in his wake. He can also get lost in dreams, disconnecting from reality and end up dreaming more than doing. Unlike the Queen of Cups, who rules in summer over the end of Gemini and most of Cancer, The King of Cups will often try to keep his emotions hidden through emotional self-control, until he can't. He should learn to be more emotionally flexible and not project his darker thoughts onto others. For every one of all signs now, while working under the reign of the King of Cups, you're being asked to be intelligent and wise in the ways of love. The energy of the King of Cups represents committed intention with creative inspiration and emotion. Integrate your emotions into the art and imagination of your daily life. Let them be positively reflected in your relationships, including your relationship with the higher self or spiritual self. Open your heart with love and truly connect with your feelings, allowing them to move through you without harm to yourself or others. Channel your emotional energy into something creative and helpful to the world. And in honor of Valentine's Day and St. Valentine, Be love. Are you spiritually curious? I've created some divination tools which might help you on your spiritual divination journey, including my Sears Casting Tarot, released last year. I am truly enjoying working with the 78 symbols on discs, and I really can't say enough about how thrilled I am with the casting board. This is a new way to enjoy an old divination tool. Links for my divination sets and more are at my website, elizabethseer.com. famous birthday time. Here's my random and very 
long list of famous or infamous late Aquarius characters and celebrities born February 10th through the 19th. Those on this list were born with the energy of the Seven of Swords and the King of Cups, which we spoke about. As always, this list does not mean I agree or disagree with a person's words or life choices. It's simply to educate on the late Aquarius personality, giving you the opportunity to compare public personas with their tarot and astrological correlations, for bad or good. Prepare yourself for this one. There are a number of people on this list who change the way things are done. They change the game and they change the world. We're going to start off with Roberta Flack, Burt Reynolds, Thomas Edison, Elizabeth Banks, Stephanie Beatriz, Emma Roberts, Cheryl Crow, Josh Brolin, Jennifer Aniston, Kelly Rowland, Natalie Dormer, Taylor Lautner, Mike Shinoda, Christina Ricci, Arsenio Hall, 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, China Phillips, Charles Darwin, Maude Adams, who famously acted in the title role of Octopussy, Henry Rollins, Jerry Springer, Peter Gabriel, the first man to break the sound barrier, Chuck Yeager, magician Teller of Penn and Teller fame, Jake Lacey, Freddie Highmore, Megan the, <laughs> Megan the Stallion, Megan the Stallion, Janice Dickinson, Gary Clark Jr., Simpsons creator, Matt Groening, Susan B. Anthony, Chris Farley, LeVar Burton, Elizabeth Olsen, Ice T, The Weeknd, John McEnroe, Johann Strauss, Billy Joe Armstrong, Jerry O'Connell, Jason Ritter, by the way, by the way, Jason Ritter, I finished season two of Another Period, and I have to say that his character, Jason Ritter's character, cracks me up. He brings me as much joy now as his father, John, did when I was young, you know, back in the day. We also have Paris Hilton, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Taylor Hawkins, may he rest in peace, William Cadbury, the English chocolate maker, the game-changing Michael Jordan, John Travolta, Yoko Ono, Dr. Dre, John Hughes, and his 80s teen movie muse, Molly Ringwald, Alessandro Volta, the physicist, chemist, inventor, and game changer, kind of like Michael Jordan did with basketball. Regina Spector, Smokey Robinson, Seal, Justine Bateman, Benicio Del Toro, Millie Bobby Brown, and Nicholas Copernicus, the father of modern, modern astronomy. And then finally, in honor of his birthday and Black History Month, he escaped slavery and then fought against it. He was an abolitionist, a writer, orator, and a statesman. He led a compelling life, and like so many on this list, he changed history. Happy birthday, Frederick Douglass. May you rest in peace and power. Here's my weekly reminder for you, and me. I'm just one person. You're just one person. But we can be what we wish to see in this world. I'm trying to always act with kindness and respect toward the planet and her inhabitants. I sometimes fail, but I keep trying because love and respect still need to matter in this world. So if you're still listening, this is your reminder to be respectful and be love, both to yourself and others. I'll be back around January 20th to talk the last sign in Western astrology, Pisces, which is ruled by the moon in the tarot. I'll also talk about the Eight of Cups, which covers the first 10 degrees or 10 days of the sign. A full moon is coming near the end of the month as well, the first one of the Lunar New Year, so I'll be touching on that. Remember, in this time of the Seven of Swords, try to be honest and open with yourself and others. 
Should you find yourself needing to be secretive, make sure to do it with emotional intelligence and honor. While you may feel like avoiding your responsibilities now, make sure those choices won't negatively impact you or others in the long run. And of course, one more time, be love. You've been listening to Elizabeth Sear, and I'm grateful for this time with you.